So my name is Shakti Subrailu. Um, I'm an assistant professor of soil science and agronomy at Central State University. Um, I'm, 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 this is my third year at Central State. I was uh, at Ohio State previously for 14 years. I came to the U.S. in 2003 to get my Ph.D. from Ohio State. Graduated from Ohio State and worked there as a research scientist for a few years and then I moved down uh, to Central State uh, uh, to take up this faculty position um, as a research assistant professor of soil science and agronomy. Okay, so this is uh, what is called as uh, edge of field monitoring unit or a system. Um, we have, a, I think, a, around like 20, 25 of those here in Northwestern Ohio. Um, Agricultural Research Service, we probably uh, are aware, if you know, uh, Kevin King, you know, their team, they have been uh, working on this for a long time here in Ohio, Northwestern Ohio. So I interacted uh, with Kevin King, you know, when I was at Ohio State, I was part of the P risk index revision initiative. You know, we were looking at water quality and we were assessing the best management practices, the impact of management practices on water quality and soil health. So I wanted to continue doing that when, when I moved down to Central State University. I said like, you know, there's a lot of monitoring happening in Northwestern Ohio. Um, especially through the H2 Ohio funds, you know, the 14 counties that the governor has identified. So, but I think, you know, my opinion, we have to be um, assessing or monitoring the resources, uh, water and soil resources down southwest Ohio because the soils are very variable. So I think, you know, I worked with Kevin and Kevin and his team were, you know, really helped us out with uh, setting up this uh, um, edge of field monitoring unit here in Brookville. So uh, we're trying to monitor two key uh, things. One is nitrogen and the one is phosphorus. So how it does is like it pulls uh, samples. We can actually program. This is an auto sampler here and that's a flow meter, signature flow meter. The, the job of the flow meter is to actually quantify the flow and gives us the flow volume. And then this is our auto sampler. It's gonna pull samples from uh, the tile here tile outlet here and in the back you can see that there's a tile uh, uh, outlet and we're tapping into a controlled drainage structure and we're pulling water samples every six hours. So it would draw let's say 100 mils of uh, water and stores up in a bottle here and it composites it. So we take those samples, take it to the lab and we analyze uh, the samples for phosphorus and nitrates and nitrites or nitrogen. I, I at Central State, you know, I'm working with uh, uh, many local partners. We work with land trusts, we work with salt and water conservation districts and try and establish these monitoring network uh, so that we can capture that variability in responses to the best management practices. We have the different best management practices and we say they're cost effective and efficient uh, when it comes to like you know improving the health of the soils and water quality but they have to be tested across the different uh, uh, soil types. For example right you know uh, in uh, in uh, the Great Miami Watershed, which is where we are in right now, the Great Miami Watershed, and, and the Little Miami Watershed, and the Northwest in Ohio. Northwest uh, Ohio, if you want, if you if you if you take it, you know, we can say like the dominant soil there is uh, Paulding or Napany or Hoytville, heavy clay soils, right? And then you come down south here, southwest Ohio, we have like let's say Kokomo or Eldine soils. The, the, they fall under different soil order category. You know, for example, the ones that, that I mentioned in northwestern Ohio, they are um, uh, either like you know insectisols or alpha sols. We have some alpha sols here down south, but let's uh, let's take for instance Kokomo or, or Eldine. They they are a mollusol. They are complete. They are in a different order. The clay mineralogy is very different. Uh, the clay that is involved in all the transformation of all the chemicals and whatever, whatnot, like in a manure application or fertilizer application, all that, that interaction is highly variable. Uh, the soils like Kokomo and Eldin, they're very, they're super active soils. And then you have up north, which are active soils. And the mineralogy is also different, like elytic uh, type clay minerals in the north, and you have mixed type clay minerals. So those would dictate the, you know, the chemistry in the soil. So it's important that we understand the variability so that we can make uh, inferences based on the variability that we're seeing um, between you know, um, Northwestern Ohio and Southwestern Ohio and how these management practices interact with our landscape. That would really help us uh, 
you know, provide data-based solutions to uh, the producers and farmers, you know. Uh, rather than blank, uh, saying blank, you know, making a blanket recommendation saying, hey, you know, do this, it's going to work. And then the farmer finds out, well, it's not working on my field. So we, we as researchers and, and, and the university's responsibility is to really, you know, provide that information. And that's what we're striving for at Central State, you know. And working with, um, like I said, like we're working with uh, Warren County Soil and Water Conservation District. We're working with uh, Clinton County Soil and Water Conservation District, Green County Soil and Water, which is Soil and Water Conservation District, you know. And we have formed a collaborative where we are trying to promote conservation practices. In fact, we have a program with uh, Tecumseh Land Trust in our, in our region, in the, in the Little Miami watershed. And uh, they have received funding from NRCS um, through the RCPP program, Regional Conservation you know, Partnership Program, uh, where we're trying to promote all these conservation practices. So our job is to really provide technical assistance there to the farmers in our region and also make sure that, you know, that we're keeping track of what's happening and what is working, where it is working, and how, you know, what is the impact you know, of these conservation practices that we are recommending. My opinion there, the farmers are really willing. The, the personal interactions that I've had with the farmers in the region here, what I've learned is that they're really willing uh, to work with, uh, let's say, you know, researchers or any agency folks in my my personal experience is that they've been they've been amazing they're great and they understand the need the the, the data that we collect uh, we keep it uh, to ourselves it's very private and you know and uh, it's never shared publicly out to any agencies unless we like you know summarize it uh, summarize the data and where uh, uh, the individual person cannot be identified by name. You know, we we have to go through a rigorous at uh, Central State. We have to go through a rigorous uh, institutional review when we work with uh, uh, the producers in the region. So it, the data is shared, but it's shared in a summarized manner, but not um, with any you know um, identification in there.